Blood Moon Alert, Libra. The Blood Moon is occurring on the 27th of September. That's Eastern Daylight Time. And on the 28th of September, if you're utilizing Greenwich Mean Time. Nevertheless, this is an important holiday. We're giving you both of these time zones because it's a very important day. It's the fourth Blood Moon in the Tetrad. It's a total lunar eclipse, a full moon. Again, it's in the sign of Aries, the ram. So it's very intense. Also this month, on the 13th, the new moon is in Virgo the Virgin, and that is a partial solar eclipse, the new moon, on the 13th of September. And, as if that wasn't enough, we've got the 23rd of September, the autumn equinox, and the sun will uh, ingress into Libra. It'll leave Virgo and ingress into Libra early in the morning. So this is a, a very intense month. There's a lot going on. We have a lot to cover. Also, there's a lot of holy days and cultural holidays of various different cultures and spiritual or religious systems going on simultaneously with some of these cosmological events, making it all very intense for people. People are all up in arms about it. Plus, they're concerned about something called CERN, the Large Hadron Collider, what they feel might be affecting reality. We're going to put a little bit of information about that into the part of this transmission that has to do with money. So we are going to cover that a little bit, just uh, for your interest. Now, your ruling planet of Venus is retrograde in the sign of Leo the Lion. And on the 6th, it will go direct in, the, in, in Leo. So that's going to affect you as well. Again, a lot going on this month. On the 1st, Venus retrograde in Leo is conjunct Mars in Leo. So that's a little planetary formula, a little Kabbalistic Rosicrucian Kabbalah formula. We're going to take that and we're going to put it into the end of the transmission where we usually go over the afterglow and some of your astrological planetary aspects and facets. We're going to put it there, and when we give you the highlights of this month, we're, we're going to uh, kind of solve that little planetary formula for you. Just make it fun for you and, and for us as well. Now, let's see how your ruling planet of Venus affects you this month, Libra. I'm Pastor Rosemary, the Astrology Angel, and thank you for joining us. This is an Angelic Horoscope Transmission. From the mighty archangel, the divine physician Raphael, who rules over all of the air signs in the zodiac, and your specific Libra angel Zuriel, who resides over your cardinal air nature. And these are his messages for you in love, money, and health. First, the love transmission portion. This is, has to do with your, the fact that Venus is retrograde in Leo up until the 6th. So, love's sort of a bear. Until after the 6th, when Venus goes direct in Leo, then it'll pick up. And it, it could be a little over, a little over-eager, a little over-compassionate, a little over-eager, a little over-friendly. However, with with the way things have been, every with Venus being retrograde, people have tended to be more standoffish and more distant and more it's all about me kind of a thing. So, this will help. This will help open people up a little bit more to each other, be they attempting to be friends or uh, be they uh, people who are in your family who want to be friendlier or be at romantic situations or just your relationship with your own spouse for that matter. But people will be more open after the six when it comes to relationships and less apt to be distant or defensive or even confrontational. So it's going to get a bit better. You are going to find though that if you've burned bridges due to the attempt to gain status, or, or importance of some kind, you'll find that those people are not going to be receptive because they feel 
they've been burned in some manner, that the bridges have been burned and, and you didn't like them before, and why should you like them now? That kind of a thing. So the caveat here would be that while Venus is still retrograde, you can be, you can keep to yourself if you like. However, you shouldn't burn bridges. Then when Venus goes direct in Leo, you'll, you'll be in a better position with people where bridges haven't been burned so badly. And new bridges can be built. Why not? So keep in mind that you can always reestablish relationships that you feel have been destroyed beyond all hope of reconciliation. And when Venus goes direct in Leo, this, this will be obvious to you, where it might seem like you don't want to bother at, at this time. So that will help quite a bit. Okay, now to get into Zuriel's money transmission, the main thing here is to try not to rely on tricks or manipulation in order to, to make money. Right now, the main thing to remember is that relationships are about, uh, excuse me, money is about your relationship with people and your trust in people. They're trusting you rather than some kind of relationship with the spirit of money that has to be something that utilizes trickery or, or manipulation in order to get people to fall for something so that you feel you've tricked them. Now, a lot of people think it's no fun to make money unless you're tricking somebody, unless you've, you've um, made them the fool and you feel you've come out on top. Some people feel it's just no fun unless that's what's going on. However, this is going to be a situation where when... Venus goes direct in Leo after the 6th. That's when people who know how to build relationships or maintain relationships will do much better than people who know how to trick people out of this or that. So this kind of follows through with the relationships uh, in your emotional life plus the relationships in your workaday world, your business life, at your job, at your at your work, your co-workers, your bosses, employers, employees, all these, they're all relationships with people. And they'll become friendlier after the sixth. And and it'll it'll be easier for you, Libra, because you're a friendly a friendly air sign that has an easier time understanding the emotionality of some of the other signs, more than uh, maybe some of the other air signs. We said here that we touch upon CERN a little bit. Now, CERN has often been linked to the god Cernunos, and there is some banter about uh, from scientists and, and people that have been putting out their opinions that CERN is some kind of a portal to open up a portal to the planet Saturn and to the Saturnian realm. And in Rosicrucian Kabbalah, that's the Sefer of Bina, to reveal and conceal, and that's where the, the Holy Mother resides. So, this is the age of Aquarius, and Aquarius is ruled by Saturn. It's also ruled by Uranus, but Uranus is said to be the progenitor of Saturn, and Saturn is said to be the progenitor of the Earth, and it is said that the Sun kind of pulled the earth away from Saturn towards itself, sort of stole the earth, if you will, from Saturn. So that's why the portal to hook that back up to Saturn may seem familiar like a homecoming to a time when in the Saturnian cults it said that Saturn ruled the world. And that this was a time uh, when... They call it the Golden Age. So this is what's tried to be reclaimed. And CERN has been said to have a lot to do with this and Jacob's Ladder and the DNA that's being played with. 
so that the angels of Jacob's ladder can go up the DNA chain and down the DNA chain, which the DNA is Jacob's ladder. This is what is being toyed with in genetics. The people are toying around in all kinds of crazy ways. Uh, and this is being done. Also in, in CERN, there are, uh, particles being produced, according to, again, to some people who are putting out information about this. They're saying that there, when the particles are collided at near light speeds or at light speed in the, in the collider, that the, the byproduct of this, a new sort of human pollution, so to speak, is called uh, particles, a new particle form called a strangelet, and that these strangelets are very heavy, and that they sink to the center of the, of the earth, excuse me, the core of the earth, the center of the earth, and, what, and they gather there, and what they will do there, no one knows. It's a new form of pollution that human beings are creating. Uh, and all creatures do this, so it's natural that these kind of things would happen, but it's all what, what comes through very strongly about this time of year and also about what CERN is doing is this. And that's that the veil is being lifted and the other dimensions are being accessed and the paranormal activity will be right in your face and coming right through. Because science and spirituality meet in Kabbalah. That's what Kabbalah is. It's the lifting of the veil off of Kabbalah, or Kabbalah. Because we will see that although death is real, it is a transformation, and, and we will be able to see that there are loved ones who we feel are no longer in, in a certain dimension, are in another dimension, and we'll be able to communicate with them. And that's what's going on. Also, there's been a lot of breaking down to subatomic particles. That was accomplished with Einstein and the splitting of the atom, but and CERN is breaking it down further. However, there's now an ability to build. And they're bringing antimatter into the realm of matter. That's non-existence and existence, and they're able to manipulate those two facets and when you can manipulate reality and antimatter exist non-existence and matter ex existence non-existence and existence one would feel like god i would imagine so human beings are are approaching why they fell in the first place was so they could then rediscover and appreciate because they'll be able to discern what's going on. No pun intended there. So you understand that the dimensions are being breached. And the lifting of the veil in the marriage supper of the Lamb, that's what that means. The lifting of the veil. The lifting of the veil from Moses' face. When you're able to see where your loved ones have gone and that they're alive in another dimension. That's what's going to go on. And people at one point in our future will be able to sort of do things like print out whatever they need, like they need a, a heart or a liver or a lung, and print it out, and they won't have to chop it out of one person and stick it into another. So these kind of things will be available in the future, and what we're doing now will seem very barbaric indeed. But there is a lot of genetic manipulation going on so that these dimensions can be traversed. That leads us into the health transmission from Zuriel and the divine physician Raphael. The first week, you will feel Libra weak. The first week of September, you will feel weak. That will improve beginning the second week, and you'll feel much better. You'll want to work on your immune system. You want to do the kind of inner alchemy and inner work and chakra work where you can help your immune system be the very best it can. Because the immune system is going to be necessary to stave off all of the aggressive individuals that might come at you. Because Mars is going to be really uh, powerful and it might get a little aggressive. 
So wherever someone's Mars is in their chart, it might become aggressive. So either parts of yourself coming at you, which is what it always is, or it may seem like others are coming at you rather forcefully. And what you need to do is just simply build your immune system up and handle them in a way where you maintain your poise and, and yet you're able to deal with them just eye to eye. And you'll feel, that'll make you feel powerful, it'll make you feel good about yourself. Okay, now we're going to get into the afterglow and the planetary aspects and facets. Oh, of course, if you're feeling that you're having a physical problem, check with your proper health care licensed physician. Okay, Venus, we're going to go over the planetary aspects. Venus is retrograde again in Leo until the 6th, so then go direct still in Leo. On the 1st, Venus retrograde in Leo is conjunct Mars in Leo. And on the 22nd, Venus is trying Uranus retrograde. We're going to take the little planetary formula, Venus retrograde on the 1st in Leo, conjunct Mars in Leo. That's like a little formula, a little problem, if you will, like a little algebra problem. So we're going to give you the answer that we got. Again, just a little fun thing for you and for us. The answer to this Venus retrograde in Leo, conjunct Mars in Leo, is overbearing compassion, searching for respect, and recognition may end in a breakup in relationships due to pride. So how this is handled is someone just has to have a little bit of humility. It doesn't mean you have to humiliate yourself. It means to just tone down the pride a little bit. And then the compassion can come through. Again, this is going to be very easy after the 6th, but this is on the 1st. So until the 6th, again, don't destroy your relationships, Libra. Don't destroy your, your, your connections with people because you want status so badly in the name of pride, that you cannot then reestablish these relationships when you need them or want them after the sixth, or when you'll feel a very compassionate urge and an eager urge to reconnect with people. Don't, just don't destroy your relationships. Just stay, just hold back, rather than going out in an offensive manner to try to destroy. Just hold back. You don't have to be defensive either. You just have to go ahead and engage people when you're feeling able and ready. And all will be well with you. All right, Libra, thank you for joining us. This is your monthly angelic horoscope transmission from the mighty divine physician, the Archangel Raphael, and your Libra angel, Zuriel. I'm Pastor Rosemary, Astrology Angel. Thank you for joining us. And join us again, Libra, next month.